Then in 03, you started SNL, but you started as a writer. Mm -hmm. And you're not on air until 05, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You know I'm just strutting, strutting for fun. I mean, I get to do little things in the monologues here and there and, and, and you know, play extras and, and different sketches, which was, which was flattering. But yeah, I mean, full on imposter syndrome. Heroes of mine had been, you know, not hired or let go from that job. I didn't think it was going to last very long. I didn't unpack my boxes. I lived at 46th Street so I could get there. And then, you know, I was, I was ready to hop on a plane the second they were like, yeah, we messed up. I mean, I knew it, you know. Did you, th did, did you think that you were going to be able to be on the cast? Were you bummed that you didn't get? Uh... Oh, yeah, I was bummed. I mean, there were plenty of times I called my manager, who's still my manager now, and I'd call him and go, I, I, I don't think I'm doing this right. And, and he's just like, no, you're actually in showbiz now. You know, not that I don't think, you know, the Second City or, or, you know, that is show business, but I knew what he meant. It was really just, it wasn't something that I thought I had a knack for because I had spent, you know, the, the years prior really kind of developing and learning my own voice. And so here I've been charged and being paid for it at a, at a high breakneck pace of writing for other people. But what I loved more than anything was the rewrite table, like and yeah. getting to like try on a Fred Armisen, you know, character, a Maya Rudolph character, and then portraying it at the table, and then having someone like Tina, you know, or Dennis McNicholas, you know, sort of go, yeah, what's that? What did you say? Like, we'll use that joke and then put that in. You can't help it. That feels like it puts little, uh, little currency, you know, drops a quarter or two in the in, in the you know the artist jackpot or uh, you know a slot machine, and you kind of like, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see what else we got. And, yeah, it just kept little by little, but you know, I was disappointed though. Even though it's an incredible job, it felt a little bit like winning a gold medal in the sport that you don't train as much for. Yeah. You know, you know, like, you wanted to be on camera. You wanted yeah. to be on stage. Yeah, because that's what I knew. But right. it, but it didn't feel like from a, a, a prideful place or. But, I, but maybe that's stuff I haven't unlocked yet. I mean, there must be something to that. But yeah, I just wanted to do a do a good job. I wanted to do you know, tr at any point try to reach my, you know, full potential, even if I even if I'm crazy in, in how much I think it is or silly in how little I think it is. Oh, and live from New York, it's Saturday night! In my view, you have done the best Joe Biden that SNL has Not ever done. Not a competition, Jake. Uh, it's it's for art. Me, it's for, art. For me, for me... <laughs> it's you, art. That's more of a dickhead thing to say than anything. <laughs> Sketch comedy, it's an art. All right, yeah, well, but, yeah, I think... But I appreciate that. But uh, it was also a different era of Biden, as you acknowledged sure. when yeah. you did that skit uh, not, not long ago. Is it weird meeting people that you've made fun of? See, I never thought I was making fun of them. I've never, I don't think I've played anyone that I've made fun of. With all due respect, this is a bunch of malarkey. I don't think I can. You're channeling them. I'm channeling yeah, a comic But I'm first. playing my dad with like fake teeth and you know, they give me, they give me nice big choppers. I got these, you know, little tiny teeth. Um, you know, but I'm always playing a version of, of myself. Uh, again, I'm not trying to fool anybody. I'm not trying to do prank phone calls and get people in trouble. You know, like I, I met him, you know, and, and he was great. He was gracious, you know, and, uh, you know, as advertised, you know what I mean? It's a gift to get to work somewhere like Saturday Night Live. It's, it's a form of superpower to be able to uh, impersonate or, 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 or empathize, you know, physically and vocally, you know, in, into someone, however you want to put it, channel someone, if you will. Um, I, I'd prefer, you know, to, to, to use it to celebrate what I like about them versus the other ways. I've been asked to do things, I remember on SNL, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that I just didn't have a connection to and I didn't wanna, it, 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 feels, it feels mean, it felt, it felt mean spirited. And I've already been, you know, uh, born into a, a, a vessel that, that's afforded a great deal of privilege and I didn't wanna like, you know, use that in a, in, a, in a negative way. It's not a pejorative imitation, you know, it's the, Camaro waxing, yeah. gaff machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Joe Biden of like 15 years ago. Yeah, not yeah. The, not the guy we got now. I'm you from eight years ago, man. <laughs> the ghost of Biden passed. Boom! Yeah, well, he's, he's the boss. He can't, like, that, stuff, that stuff has re re repercussions on a global scale, if not the NASDAQ. You know, so like. Joe Biden, you look different. I mean, the other people that played it since me, I think it's been like Mulaney. You know, Woody Harrelson and Jim Carrey, like all like right. great guys and all like incredible artists within their own. So to like lose the gig or whatever, you know, is like, no, 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 yeah, like, yeah. I, like that's that's yeah, it was, it was never mine to begin with. You know, like I, I only got it because I happen to be I remember Fred Armisen calling me in, in 2008 when uh, Obama had selected, you know, uh, President Biden as his running mate. Fred calling me go, hey, congrats. I was like, why would happen? He goes, Biden got picked. Joe Biden and Chris Dodd. I go, so what? He goes, you played him in that Halloween sketch. Remember when Obama came? I was like, oh yeah.
Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it was like, so it wasn't like, you know, it just sort of. Doop. It wasn't like Tina to Sarah Palin. It wasn't like this automatic, we have to do this. It was no, like, no. you'd already been there. I had already done it. They, they'd already fitted me for the, the wig. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, not, a bad, not a bad thing to fall into. And, and then, yeah, then they get to play against Tina as Sarah Palin in those, in those 2008 election sketches. <laughs> Of course. Okay, because I practice a couple zingers where I call you Jill. Okay, great. <laughs> and then I just got to like, you know, duck and you know, bob and weave throughout and all that. But it's been fun to play elements of him. I mean, you know, be able to play Joe Biden and Mitt Romney oh, in, in like it. in the same political season. Darn it all the heck. You know, that's range. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>